Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, and we are going to do one of our tele talk videos. And this is going to be another interview with testimonials and burdens of the heart. And I introduce to you tonight a beautiful couple, Jonathan and Fanta. How you doing, Jonathan and Fanta? Thank you so much for joining me tonight. We're doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having us on your show tonight. We um, we give praise and honor to God for um, this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we say congratulations to you for your new website. Thank you. Uh, God is so good. Yes, he is. In the blessing business. Yes. So glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, you so that, much man. for Having us on, we really appreciate the work that you've been doing in the name of in the name of the Lord, and to, you know, help us to heal the hearts. And um, we received some of that healing through your um, YouTube videos. By you know, we thank, thank God for you, sister. And so, want to say hi to everybody listening. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I want you guys to decide which one is going to start out with your burden. Thank you for sharing that with me because, you know, when you're talking to a computer, sometimes you're wondering, is anybody on the other side listening? So it's yeah. really good to know that somebody's benefiting. I want to yeah. ask you, um, I want to ask you guys to share what's on your heart. Which one of you feels led to start out? And um, and we're going to talk about some deep things, you guys. So listen to this couple, because you may be able to receive a lot of healing. You hear me? So listen with your heart. They're going to share with theirs. <clears throat> Carry well, on. I want to start out, you know, of course, my name is Jonathan. And, um, oh, goodness gracious, there's so much that I can talk about in terms of the darkness that I've experienced in this lifetime. I'm in my mid-30s. Um, I had a very, uh, I had a pretty popular, um upbringing and start in life. Um, a very turbulent, and, did you yes, say yes. turbulent upbringing? Okay. Yeah, turbulent upbringing. Uh, I grew up in uh, various cities um, in um, poverty and um the burden that really plagued me or bothered me the most is the um, sexual abuse and the molestation that I um, encountered uh, as a young child. And uh, I grew up with uh, being molested by men and women. Um, there were two women and one male um, perpetrators in my life that were um, molesting me as a child. And I grew up holding all of that in. Oh, yeah. And um, it ended up turning into violence and gang activity and drug dealing and uh, just a lot of anger and confusion and... And even at one point, I became a victimizer. I actually um, created a victim um, uh, by molesting a family member. And I by molesting a what? I, uh, it, it faded out. I'm sorry, babe. By molesting a what? I molested a family member when I was 22 years old. I molested mm -hmm. my niece who was 11 years old. Mm hmm and I went to the penitentiary for it. I received a six-year sentence. And um, it, 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 um, it was very traumatic. Yes. Um, it was very traumatic all the way around um, to have to deal with the fact that, you know, I had um, had these encounters growing up and then, you know, um, basically not knowing how to deal with it properly and not ever getting therapy for it, um, not having anyone to stick that up with, um, it manifested and rolled up to the person, her, and, um, you know, like I said, I mean, I went to the penitentiary for that, and 
it has taken me years to grow to the point that I am today to be able to talk openly about it, you know, and try to help others get the help that they might need in order to break those curses and to break those thought patterns and to, um, you know, uh, relieve themselves of the uh, mental um, um, torture and the heartache that comes along with being either a victim or a victim. So you're saying, I, I have to repeat on that. So you're saying mm -hmm. that um, it's hard. It's like going through that vicious cycle. There's nobody there to help. There are no churches to help you navigate through it and process through all of the shame and the and the anguish and the turmoil that's constantly haunting you every step of the way. And it, it really takes a God to heal you. And um, But what ends up happening is until you get that healing and until you go to God, it's the same old vicious cycle. Hurting people hurt people. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, because what I, what I realize is that um, if I don't talk about, if I don't confess of my sins, or if I don't talk about issues that I'm dealing with um, to other people and to God too, uh, that that's like that's like holding poison inside. Yes, you know? yes. And you know the Bible talks about the dog returning to its vomit, but yes. see. We have to bomb it. We have to get the bombing out. We have yes. to throw it up. Mm, and, yes, uh, yes, yes. If we don't throw it up, then we just hold it all in and then it continues to manifest in all these ugly ways. Yes, it does. You are so and right. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, the Lord has been able to completely heal me uh, of, of, um, of the abuse. Um, That's beautiful. Uh, Mm -hmm. It really is. Can I share something? Can I add to what you said there? Sure. Um, that's something that I use a lot, that analogy. That's why I got so excited when you said it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't realize, just like getting sick to your stomach when there's something that you've eaten, you've ingested that is really toxic that's spoiled is this rancid and it's 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 working it's wreaking havoc on your system your stomach cramps up you double over <clears throat> or you get nauseous your body's trying to to get this stuff up and out and you're trying to mm -hmm. keep it down because you don't like the way it feels to regurgitate but that is mm -hmm. the only relief as soon as you regurgitate it's instant relief and it's yes, the it same is. way when you go to god when you go to God and you ask him to heal you and he starts pulling that stuff up by the root, sometimes you dry heave some of that out. So you cry it out. You you pray it out. There are times you ask and then next thing you know, it's just gone. And you never know how God's going to process that through you. But unless you go to him and unless you ask him to get healing, listen, you guys. This couple is telling you the truth. Unless you go to God and mm -hmm. get that healing, I don't care how lousy you feel about it. I don't care how much it hurts to talk about it. Get it out. It ain't killing yes, nobody yeah. but you. And you'll be nothing more than another weapon of the enemy to hurt That's other right. people. I'm gonna That's let right. I'm, I'm gonna let you finish because I can get on a roll and I don't mean to take over your um, your testimony. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I mean, but you know, that's really uh that's really the meat of it. And you know, the enemy he played a game on me for years. Like even after I went through the therapies and after I went and did the time in the penitentiary, I was still afraid. I mean, you know, I would talk to really people that I feel really close to. Right. But I was still afraid to be like open and kind of because the enemy made me think that I live in a world in which, oh, if you tell somebody this, you're going to be shamed and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to uh, fit the profile of this and, you know, you, no one's going to ever accept you. But and, that, and those things might be true for the world. You know, the world might not ever accept me for a mistake or for something that I did. 
right. 20 years ago or what have you. But I know the guys over there accept me. That's right. And so, God's people too. The real ones. No doubt. And so, you know, that was that was, uh, that was was another, uh, that was something that, you know, the enemy tried to hold over me. Like he wanted me to be ashamed to expose my own filth. You know, and so, but... Yeah, so uh, that, you know, when, like I said, you know, the more I got into the Word of God, and the, the stronger He made me, and the more He renewed me and gave me confidence, and like, and I realized that I was a new person, that the old man had passed away. It's yes. not hard anymore to talk about that because That's right. I don't I don't identify with that, you know, person. That person has fallen away. Thank you. And, um, you know, a new man has emerged, and now... A new man is here to to do whatever I can to help break the cycles and the curses and the patterns off of other people who might, you know, who might suffer from the same illnesses. Really. Exactly. It's a it's a mental illness. It's a spiritual illness. There's a generational curses. Uh, this has been going on in my family. It's been going on in the, in the African American community, not just the African American community, of course, but you know, and um. In all of this, I was searching for how did this, how did this, you know, illness uh, get into me and uh, my family and my community, and you know, I I traced it back. Um, at one point, I traced it back anyhow to uh, our slavery experience in America because at yes. uh, one point we were we were made into sexual real property. That's we right. Just have no way with us. That's so, right. We never really got healed from that. We mm -hmm. just went on generation after generation without any proper healing, without any reparative, um, um, anything. That's and right. So, you know, we were just like passing on these mm -hmm. negative mental legacies of slavery. But then again, like I said, it didn't just start in slavery. I mean, if you read the Bible, you know that it's been going on for thousands exactly. of years. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, uh, yeah. Can I share something real quick? Um, there was yeah. a little girl when I used to work at a home for emotionally disturbed children. Mm -hmm. There was a little girl about four years old. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this before or since. It was mm -hmm. the most bizarre thing. This little girl... She had long, stringy, silky hair. I guess her hair hung down to almost her waist. And it was mm -hmm. always tousled and some of it hanging down in her face. And when I looked at her, I asked the worker who was her particular group home parent for the, you know, for that week. I asked her, I said, has she been sexually molested? And she looked at me and she said, has she? And I said, you know why I asked you that? Because I've never seen this before. When I looked at this little girl, she looked like a used woman. Mm -hmm. She had the look, that look of sexually being worn out and used up. It was the strangest mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I had never seen a sexually abused child. But mm -hmm. it was written all over her. I mean, everything, her whole countenance. She looked like mm -hmm. a sensual woman that was tired and used up. And mm -hmm. I, it was there was no little girl. I'm telling you, no little girl left in her. It was the saddest little thing. And mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if her parents were around. I don't know if it was done by her parents. I I didn't you know get into. Her history, and you know, neither did they, because that stuff is really confidential. But it was really mm -hmm. sad to see. You could tell that some grown men had used that poor little girl up. She was only yeah. four, mm -hmm. only four, and she was already living at the center. Imagine how long that must have been going on. She must have been two or three. I mean, mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. And yeah, she, yeah. you know... You know, she'll be given medicine and all that kind of stuff. But the only healing she'll ever get is God. And yeah. and and you just, yeah. you know, women like, that's when you see women turn out to be prostitutes or they turn yeah. out to be very, very promiscuous. I, I knew another woman. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it quick. 
I'm not mm -hmm. trying to cut into your part, but I'm just adding to it because these are the kind of things, the vicious cycles you see. Now, that was a That's little cool. girl. I couldn't tell if she was Spanish or Caucasian. But this other woman, this was a black woman, and I knew her from, from school. I'll just say that. And mm -hmm. she was always very weird in her behavior in high school. Oh, I didn't mean, even mean to say that. But she would do things uh, very bizarre. And one of the mm -hmm. things that really, really hurt my heart was when we, you know, she would like to, uh, to tease the guys in high school. And mm -hmm. when I went to her house in my 30s, she and I had crossed each other's paths. And she invited me over to her apartment. Her walls, I had never seen anything like this, but this is a total victimized woman who had been sexually molested all her life. You could tell it. I didn't know it in high school. I didn't know enough to, to discern that. But once I was in my 30s and I had been walking with the Lord for several years, I could see it as plain as day. And when I walked in her house, I understood exactly why she was so weird in high school. Mm -hmm. Her walls were covered with her pictures, pictures, big giant poster sized pictures of her in naked poses as if she were posing on, on, on Playboy or something. Oh my goodness. All over her walls. I had never seen, you know, most people, even if they're in that kind of lifestyle, they carry it discreetly. She was blasting it on the rooftop. It, you walked in a living room and you saw behind over there and boobs over there. And I was like, oh, I don't believe this. And, yeah, and then here was the striking part. Check this out. Her father came in to visit, to drop mm. in. He sat on the couch and put his arms around her like she was his woman. I knew wow. then. Mm, mm, mm. I knew then what was up. That, that is so, that, that is, that's so disturbing and so sad. But you know what, Pat? I mean, I honestly believe that that's the reality that a, a large number of people are actually living in. Yes. Living you it know? and not telling it. Living it, yeah, smiling yeah, over it. Some of them, I mean, I, I knew a woman who, uh, who she didn't have, she didn't um, have pictures and stuff up like that, but she would, and this was after I had already been to my um, healing, therapy, you know, after I had already went to jail and all of that stuff. And, right. But I, I, you know, I was dating a woman once afterwards and she um used to you know tell me how she wanted pictures of herself you know similar to that yes and i thought to myself she must have been you know i and i asked her i asked her what she abused you know um as a child and she denied it but i just kind of detected you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, by some of her behavior that you know she had dealt with some of that abuse and uh you know like I don't know, just some of the things that she was attracted to, the music she was attracted to, and the videos that she would watch and stuff like that. It's right. been ingrained now in a lot of the young women, you know, to accept that as a norm. Exactly. You know, it's just, you know, because you even look at some of the celebrities like uh, Miley Cyrus. I don't know if you know who that is. Mm -mm. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, you know, one of these young, it's one of these pop stars singing. Yeah, I but like, when you look at, look at like how they're uh, making themselves appear in the public, it's yes. like they don't have anything. Right. And for the little girls that are watching them. Exactly, you know, and that's what they want to model after. It, it's just ridiculous. It's like, you know, there's a mass sexual offending going on yes. in the media. Yes, yes, yes. So it's really sad, and, that, and I mean, I would have to say that that also probably had something to do with my programming. Oh yeah, oh it did because there's a spirit, there's a spirit behind that. It's a demonic okay. thing that works through the the media, and those spirits, when you entertain them, that's the doorway. Your eyes, your ears, your senses, that's your doorway when you begin to uh, to uh, acquiesce or, or agree with them. You begin to 
to absorb them and say, oh, yeah, this is cool, you know, and, right. and, and you don't realize how you take that in. Now, I'm going to have to stop here because I know how people's attention spans are. So we're going to start a new video. So we're going to start right where we are. Don't go anywhere. The rest of you, if you need to take a little potty break, go right on ahead because I will be back with an, another video. I knew this was going to take a while. So you guys, you take this in because this is the kind of stuff people don't talk about. And this is what we need healing from. Yes. Okay, I'm done. I'll be back.